Hello and welcome to Intuitive Nature, the podcast. My name is Susan Jane and I believe that trusting your intuition is the best way to live your life with meaning and purpose. Each week you will hear about how you can connect, develop and trust your intuition through meditations, readings and my own personal experiences. Join me to understand how your intuition can guide you towards a life full of meaning and loving purpose. Hello everyone and welcome back to Intuitive Nature, the podcast. I'm Susan Janney Intuitist, your host for this Intuition and Spirituality series. And I just want to wish everybody a very, very Merry Christmas. We um, This will be coming out Christmas Eve, so you will be in that mad stage of probably getting everything organised, um, travelling or moving around and, and doing things like that. So I thought it was really appropriate to bring forward a bit about intuition and the festive fear. Now, when I'm looking at that, I have to be honest, I'm a little bit of a Grinch when it comes to Christmas. Possibly, but we like the Grinch. The Grinch always comes around at the end, and I'm a bit like that. You know, I, I sort of do the bit of ho ho hum leading up to Christmas. But once Christmas is here and the, the spirit of actual Christmas comes together, then it's, it is certainly uh, a different aspect of it, and that's when we'll really come to life. But Part of being a bit of a Grinch leading up to Christmas was because of the Christmas fear that I had or the festive fear that I had. Now, my particular festive fear, and I should have turned that phone off, I do apologise. Um, um, part of my festive fear, oh, I've just died, <laughs> is gift giving. Now, I love giving gifts. I have no problems about giving gifts. But my fear, my anxiety comes up in what if they don't like the gifts? Am I getting the right gifts? Is it the right one? What am I doing? So I have this anxiety about giving the gift. And it's not purchasing a gift. It's not about buying the gift. It's not about actually giving the gift. It's the response you're going to get. Will they like it? So I have this little bit of a fear, and, and that's why I get a bit gringy at the beginning of Christmas or before as Christmas is starting. Now, I am one of these types of people that I don't do the whole walk through the shop Christmas um, shopping experience. I am I, I don't do shopping centres well. I think that's part of the um, the empath. I think that's part of being uh, aware of your own. Um, emotions and your own energies and I tend to pick up other people's energies so I'm not good in shopping centres. I, I can last half an hour and then I start to feel it within the hour it's like where's the exit so I don't I really don't do Christmas um, shopping and, and malls and stuff like that very well at all. I prefer to go to a little local supermarket and I'm, I'm definitely not one for big big crowds. So that's me. So it's part of the gringy thing because um, obviously when you are doing your Christmas shopping, it is busy. It's 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 a busy time. There's a lot more people out. There's a lot more um, cars around. So you, you're really starting to pick up these energies. And I start to get a little bit anxious. I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not happy in that space. I don't like that space. So I wanted to talk about the festive fear. And I called it the festive fear because it's really all about anxiety and we have anxiety for different sort of reasons. We have anxiety. Anxiety is basically like a fear of the future, so something that's going to happen in the future. That's what anxiety is. Um, depression is something that's actually happened in the past and you're holding on to it. So we have the two different aspects. Now, with anxiety, it also can create depression because you worry so much about what's going to happen in the future when the future comes, you've actually, it comes back into the past and we start to, well, that could happen because it happened before. So we start to create this depression as well. But anxiety is when we, we start to get these feelings of, um, of anxiousness, but anxiety can also be really crossed between excitement. Like the feelings you get as a child from excitement are very similar to the feelings that you get from anxiety. You get the palpitations in the heart. You get the, the racing thoughts and, the, you know, the excitement. 
Anxiety and excitement are very, very close in their physical responses in the human. So we do get the same sort of physical feelings and responses from anxiety as we do from um, excitement. So they're sort of things that we need to be aware of. So as a child, you might, got, might have got excited about a Christmas gift or giving a gift because I was so, I, I know, I was so excited about giving this particular gift and then it backfires. And so it, and then from there on, it started to create this anxiety that the gifts I, were giving, I was giving were not good enough, were not right, were not in line with where they needed to be. And all these sort of feelings started to come up so that was the stuff in the past, but I wasn't depressed about it. I wasn't like, me, I'm not going to do it. I just became anxious because I wanted to do it. Now, the other area I wanted to, to address too, as far as the festive fear goes, is the difference between pressure and anxiety. Now, we we're all coming to the end of our working week. Uh, well, most of us, some of us aren't. But as we come to the end of our, our working week and we move into Christmas, we would have come through this pressure from work and it can create anxiety. Anxiety can create pressure, pressure can, can create anxiety, but they are different and we need to be really mindful of what the differences are. When we start to look at them in this, in this concept, we look at pressure as an external situation. So we're looking at anything external from you. So time, it could be pressure from the boss. It could be pressure from the family. It could be pressure to buy the right presents, pressure to make sure the Christmas um, pud's done, you know, the, the, the table set, pressure to get to point A to point B to visit family members, pressure to do this, pressure to anything external of you is classed as a pressure. It's a pressure point for you. It's, it's, it's all coming down on you in that sort of a sense. So if you could imagine it being external and you're basically getting squeezed, you're getting pressurised. Now, anxiety, on the other hand, is internal. So it is internally that we are addressing the anxiety. We, we, it's, it's our thoughts. It's our ideas. It's like, oh, my God, are they going to like that gift? What is the response going to be? It's in the future. We haven't done it yet. And it's a, a, a thought that I have or a feeling that I have or a belief that I have that I've not got the right gift or I've not done this right or and we start to build up this anxiety. Now, anxiety also, it's similar to pressure, like pressure, we can handle quite a bit of pressure. You'd be surprised. We can handle quite a bit of pressure. But with pressure, it gets relieved. Now, if you're getting too much pressure and you're not getting that relief, then you are going to explode for one another, want of another word. So if you can imagine all this pressure coming in on you, if you cannot relieve some of that pressure, and some of it could be like in, in the situation with work, it be, could be ticking off those tasks. As you tick off those tasks, you ease off the pressure. Um, and usually pressure in a work situation is you, it's a deadline. It might be a deadline. You've got to get that done by such and such a time. So if you can tick off some of the things that are happening to reach that deadline, you might not get that get to that deadline. You're supposed to, but you might not. But that's the, pr the pressure. Now, as you can imagine, you're trying to get to that deadline. You're, if you're not ticking off those tasks to get there, your anxiety will be going up and up and up with it. So as you can see, the pressure can cause anxiety. Same the other way around. If I'm so fearful about, or not fearful, but I'm so concerned um, and anxious about how people are going to receive my gift, then I'm actually creating more pressure on myself by maybe buying more, getting something different, having a look around you know, doing a bit more online shopping, doing a bit more of this, doing a bit more of that. And we start to create that pressure on ourselves because I haven't got enough, I haven't done this, I haven't done that. And we create our own pressure. So the anxiety can create pressure. Pressure can create anxiety. Now, the biggest thing about this is understanding the difference and knowing where that is coming from because that's when we can start to change things up and look at things a little bit differently. Now, when we look at Christmas or festive season, we start to look at um, all those elements that go with it. 
a lot of people go on holidays, a lot of people travel. Um, so we're, we're winding up with work. We are winding up with Christmas and with travel and gifts and everything else. So our whole um, lifestyle is just getting this real big rock and roll. It's just going everywhere. We, the pressures are coming on from not only work, not only home, not only society, um, but for 2020, oh, my goodness, what a terrific year 2020 was, and I say that with tongue-in-cheek, um, you know, with the COVID and, and with the situation that's been going around, the situations that have been going around, it has just escalated it. Now, Christmas for people, most people, was going to go one way or another. It's either going to be absolutely terrific because of the year that they've had and they've just got together with family and they've been able to do what they want to do, or it's going to go the other way where we're just going to start to sort of head into the cave and, and just do whatever we can and, and go into this sort of rabbit hole of, of not sure where to go, what to do. Now, that's fine and anyone can do whatever they choose to do. It's their choice. Uh, but remember, it is your choice. And if you choose to do what you do, then you choose to take on the consequences of what you do as well. So when we're looking at pressure and we're looking at anxiety, the whole idea of getting an understanding of the two different ways is so you have uh, the ability to work with some, or you, you have the ability to then discover how to get through that or what it is. So when we look at pressure and, oh, excuse me, scratch my nose. Um, when we look at pressure, we, we look at how we can ease that pressure off. So with pressure, it is about uh, an understanding of our timeframes, of what we have available. And, and a lot of the pressure is timeframe based because Christmas is a timeframe. We, we, you know, it's a, that's, that's the day. Um, so we are situated in that. But we need to be really mindful of the year we've had and, and what we're doing to ourselves and we're putting ourselves under this much pressure. It really isn't good for us. That this type of pressure, when it's extreme, will can take you over the top, can take you through to that anxiety, to that depression, and, and further on. And we don't we don't need that in our life. We don't need that type of thing in our life. It's we, we've, we're experiencing enough without having to put or add more pressure on ourselves. So when we start to look at the pressure, we want to be able to reduce some of those tasks that are creating that pressure. We need to reduce some of the beliefs we have um, to see if that is suitable. So I am I know I'm, I'm a bugger for, you know, time frames and we go, okay, I've got to be out to get to work by 9 o'clock. So I need to leave the door by 9, nine o'clock to get there by 10. So I will get on the computer, I will do some work, I will do a video, I will do this, do that, and I give myself those, I, I, I check those time frames and, and I go through those time frames. Now, the thing is with that, I tend to, it always tends to take a little bit longer. But because I've set it in my head to go, I want to achieve this, this and this and this before I go, I start to give myself more pressure than I really, really need. And this is what I want you to look at. I want you to be more mindful of this time frames that we have. Now, the other aspect, the flip side of that, is that there is this and this and this and this that we want to get done. And a lot of people will go, well, you know what, it can wait till the next day. And then they have this to do the next day and then this to do that they left from the day before. Consequently, they start to pressurise themselves again because they're not getting anything done. So we have to be mindful of our what we can do and what we can't do. Now, the world is changing. We know the world is changing. We've experienced it in 2020. The world is changing. There is no reason why you can't change as well. There is no reason why you can't say to the family, guess what, we're not doing that this year. We're going to do something different. There's no reason why you can't do that. My mother came, brought us all out. I, I'm an immigrant, immigrant. Immigrant, you know. I was two and a half when I came from um, England to Australia. Mum and Dad, I had three older brothers and sisters. I was the fourth one and Mum was six months pregnant. So it was a pretty full-on time. 
Mum had her, we arrived in August, mum had the first Christmas as a traditional English Christmas with all the trimmings of, of the roast lunch and everything else. The second year came along and she did the same because that's what you do, that's your tradition. You're from England, you have a big, you know, Christmas spread, uh, all the roast veggies, all the roast meats, uh, you, you do it that way. It was the second year that mum turned around and said, not again. We are not doing Christmas like that again. We had come from the Northern Hemisphere to the Southern Hemisphere. We come from the cold, um, the white Christmas to a <laughs> sunburnt Christmas. As you can say, it's hot. It is getting warmer and warmer. Um, so the whole Christmas tradition had to change for mum. Now, the gathering and the lunch didn't have to change, but what you served and what you did had to change. We had to change with the times. We had to change with the move. Now, 2020 has given us the option to change with the time, to change with the mood. We don't need to put all that pressure on ourselves to achieve the same uh, outcomes. Mum, the third year along, we had uh, a cold meat spread so we had prawns we always have prawns now love them um oh what do you you call them shrimps i think you call them shrimps in, in america so we had those um so we had like a seafood area there any uh roasts or anything else that needed to be cooked my mum wanted to do a cooked chook it all got done prior so we had the time to get it cooked and it sat in the fridge Yes, with that sort of a situation, you may need to get a second fridge. <laughs> but it allowed us to have Christmas Day without the cooking, without any extra heat. We spent most of our time, we still do, in the pool or by the beach or by the water um, because it's so it gets so hot. It's allowed us to adjust our Christmas to still have everything involved, the Christmas lunch and everything with it, but not to be restricted by traditions. So we kept the tradition as far as um, getting together and having lunch, but we didn't keep the tradition as in what to serve. And funnily enough, I brought that through to my children and we always had salad. One of my favourites was that crunchy noodle salad. Um, and, yeah, look that up. That is so nice. But we'd have a, an array of salads and, and fresh fruit and, it it was just it was just really nice. It was it was lovely, and the, the the prawns, of course, the prawns and the cherries, things that we don't have in things that only come in season at Christmas or around that period, which was the stone fruit comes in here in Australia, uh, the cherries and um, mangoes are just starting to come in. Those sort of things that you don't have all year, they became Christmas for us. They became synonymous to Christmas. So as soon as I see the cherries coming out, I know it's Christmas. So we've changed and that allowed us to take the pressure off. It allowed some of those areas to be eased so we weren't putting that much anxiety on ourselves from those pressures. So what I want you to be really, really mindful of or careful of is what is the pressure and what is anxiety because again one can create the other and one can create the other one back so be mindful is this pressure really coming from you or is it coming from somebody else now when the kids want um i don't know the latest barbie doll or whatever it is and you can't get it think about your plan b all right, think of it another way that you can ease that pressure off and get things through so it's not as taxing on you. Work out where the uh, this information is coming from. Now, this pressure is coming from, this Barbie doll pressure is coming from a child. This child wants this Barbie doll. Now, think about what you're teaching this child. Does this child get everything she wants? Does this child have to learn to um, understand what the situation is? And I'm not saying dish them about bloody Christmas, you don't have to be like that, but you can be mindful of it. And it's creating those life experiences for your child 
and for you as well. So it's all about that learning experience. And if you can't do that, you can't help your child. If a child is putting their hands out and expecting things all the time, is that really what you want your child to have an awareness of? Is that you just put your hand out and you see that? Or do you want them to get a better understanding of what life is about? And I don't mean the hardness. I do mean having a positive attitude. And, and if you want a Barbie doll for Christmas, ask for a Barbie doll. See how it goes. And I know, I've done visualisation, I know you can get what you want and you need to have a positive mindset about it. But when we're looking at it, and, and this was one of the things that I looked at, if that child wanted a Barbie doll, does that child want a Barbie doll because she wants the Barbie doll or because her friend's got the Barbie doll? We start to go, oh, okay, because the friends have got it, that's what she wants. Um, this is all about learning, about the learning curve for not only you but your child as well, your children as well. So there is going to be things that um, they're not going to get, they're not going to receive or they're, they're, they're going to be a little bit disappointed about. But this is how a child will build up resilience. This is how a child will understand what life is about and build those resilience up and build that understanding up. So what we need to be um, aware of is, I'll put all my little buttons on, what we need to be aware of is what you're teaching that child when you're doing that, when you're putting yourself under so much pressure that what you're doing is you're giving that child that, appeasing that child for the sake of you and your health and where you're going. Don't do it. Do what you can do. Put your effort into it. Don't be lazy, but don't put yourself under that much pressure that you lose who you are because we don't want that. You, you don't want that and the family doesn't really want that. You might think that they want this, 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 and this, this, but what they really want is you to be you and be happy and loving and be genuine you if you can't do it turn around and say i can't do that i just cannot do that allow your child to te teach your child allow your child to see that you are not perfect you are who you are and you're proud to be who you are allow your child to see that allow your child to know that that child can do that too allow that in your child because if we are moulded and taught to be a particular way, is that really who that child is? Is this where we get that rebellion from, from the children as they grow up because you're not allowing them to be them? Um, oh, I've gone really off topic, sorry. So anyway, um, so that's the pressure. Don't put yourself under too much pressure. Now, the anxiety side of it, uh, one of the little tricks I have for anxiety is um, I remember there's times there when I remember growing up and mum would say something to me, right? And then, and then as I had children, I would say that to my child. And I remember thinking, oh, my God, I sound just like my mother. Now, it wasn't necessarily a bad thing because when you're, when you're um, listening to that sort of thing, you are going to repeat it. That's what you do. So it wasn't a bad thing, but I was really mindful. Now, when I heard myself say that, I could hear my mother's voice. This is what anxiety can be like. Okay, so we're getting these thoughts saying, oh, will they like that gift? I don't know if they're going to like it. I don't know if I've done the right thing. What I want you to do is with those thoughts, make them a voice. What does that voice look like? So all of a sudden I'm going, all right, do they like that? Will they like that? All right, put a voice to that. Don't make it my voice because I'm hearing myself say it now, but make that a different voice as I'm hearing it in my head. And then I sort of go, okay, well, what would that voice look like? Because for mine it's a little bit um, squeaky, a little bit, irritating you know that irritating voice <laughs> that's how much like, well, they're gonna like it oh, they might not be liking it oh sorry sorry about those on the podcast and not on the video you can see the extreme um anyway so you make that thought into a voice that voice into a vision now my vision 
tends to go a little bit like um, Cruella from the uh, 101 Dalmatians, right? I, she starts to get this real powering thing and, you know, you're not good enough and rah, rah, rah. So now when I get this, these thoughts about, oh, will that get me any good? Well, I, and I start to get that a little bit anxious, I bring in Cruella. I bring in this, this voice and going, you know, like, no, you're just being nasty. You're just being a nasty, nasty voice and I'm not going to listen to that. And if the child doesn't like the gift, that's not up to me to decide. It's up to the child to decide whether they like it or not. And if I've done that wrong, well, I've done it with all the right intentions and I need to let that go. And when Cruella goes, yeah, yeah, but you're not good enough, well, then I just tell Cruella to get back into her cave because I'm not interested in that. So this is, yeah, I know, it sounds a little bit crazy, but this is where we go. This is this is what happened. And, and I mean, honestly, you're listening to those negative voices, you are going to go crazy. We've got to stop doing that. So make the, oh, well, those negative voices, they're not really voices, it's a thought. If we can make that thought a voice, we can make that voice into a vision. And when we make it into a vision, it allows us to easily say, Go away. I nearly swore then. Go away. <laughs> go away in the nicest possible way we can say go away. We have that opportunity. When we start to see those thoughts, well, when we start to feel those thoughts and we, we put them into a vision of somebody else, it can separate us. It just takes that away from us and we can go, okay, it's not me. It's the, the devil on the shoulder, not the angel. So we have that opportunity to do that. If we make those thoughts into a voice and into a vision of that voice, what does that voice look like? Now, I know you could turn around and go, oh, God, that, well, most of you could turn around and say, oh, that sounds like my dad or, or that sounds like my mum. So you can put a vision to that voice because if I said to you, think about your mum, you would be able to sort of vision your mum. You might not be able to get all the details. You might not have seen her for a while. She might have passed, but you will still have that feeling of your mum. Let's do that with our anxiety, with our anxious thoughts. Now, I talked to you about the pressure, how pressure builds up and we get it from the different ways. Anxiety will do the same. Now, I, um, I worked in pharmacy for a little while and um, I did all the natural health side in the pharmacy. But one of the things I remember the pharmacist saying was that with um, allergies, what happens with allergies is that our body will be fighting an allergy and it could be fighting lots of different allergies. So we might eat something and it's, it's creating a bit of an allergy there. So your body's fighting it. And then you might find somebody walks past and they have got perfume on and that creates a little bit of a, an allergy too. So the body starts to fight it. And then you might walk through... The florist and all of a sudden you start sneezing what happens with these allergies it's like you have a cup and and you can have this cup here's your cup and you can put so many allergens in it and then after a while the allergens start to flow over so this is what happens with your your allergy so all of a sudden you may go oh i'm allergic to that because that was the final thing that made your allergies flow over but there could be other things. So I find that um, sometimes a pollen or a dust will make me sneeze and I start to get this um, the sneezing. Now, so I could, straight away I go, well, it's the dust. But I could have had something to eat that created my body to start fighting an allergy that I'm allergic to as a, um, as a like, say, wheat or gluten. And then... And I'm, I'm doing that, I'm handling that, that's cool, that's great. But then all of a sudden a flower comes past and I smell this flower and get this pollen and that sends me over the top. So that's how allergies work too. So we can, we can have various different types of um, allergy reactions and we can be fighting them and you might not have any symptoms at all and then all of a sudden you'll get something will happen and you'll, you'll create symptoms such as sneezing or, or whatever. Allergies work like that. Anxiety works like that. We can handle, like pressure, quite a bit of anxiety. We can handle it because it's, again, very, very similar to excitement. So we can handle anxiety. We can handle it as long as we don't let it get on top of us. But, again, too much of it 
it starts to bubble up. Now, one of the things that um, my partner says is he gets to the stage where sometimes when he's going to work, he starts to feel really, really anxious. And he goes, I'm not I'm not anxious about work. Why am I feeling anxious to go to work? And I said to him, well, what were you thinking about before or as you were driving to work? Oh, I was thinking about my son or I was thinking about this and I was thinking about that. All of those are creating a type of, because there's, there's situations there, obviously, um, but all of those are coming in together and creating that anxiety. It's just going to work that's the trigger that sends it over the top. And so you're focusing on that when in reality it's not that. It's everything else that comes with it. You might have been driving down the path, down, down the road and saw a sign with a, a happy family on it. Straight away that can create that anxiety if that is what is, is happening. So, again, we can handle so much anxiety and, and even this gift giving that I've been talking about, it's not, it's not extreme. But I must admit, when the kids are opening up their presents, I sort of go, oh. <laughs> so, and I, but I know once they're open, it's done. It's done. And, and honestly, one of the ways that I've de dealt with it is to keep the receipts and go, Mum, if you don't like it, if the kids doesn't like it, please, I do not care if you take that back in and change it. It's, it's just, it will not worry me at all. Um, so, we make up for it in another way. So with your um, allergy, uh, with your allergies, with your anxiety, just be mindful of it. Try and get those thoughts into a voice. Make that voice really annoying and then get an image to that voice. And then when you start to become aware that you're getting anxious about something or you know what it is, Make bring that image up. Bring, keep bringing that image up, and eventually you'll start to get to the stage where you'll know the difference between that voice and your intuition, because your intuition will certainly not sound like that. Um, it will be completely different. So um, it will be you, and you will know your intuition because it will be soft. It will be gentle. It will be loving. It will not be uh, anxiety creating. Um, so, so that's all about um, the festive fear, and um, I, I mean, to be honest, like I said, I don't follow any uh, religious um, institutions. So, Christmas to me isn't uh, necessarily as um, impactful as it is for other people. But I have to be honest; I love the the um, excuse to get together and enjoy the family and enjoy that festive um, feeling. So that is really good. But please, everybody, stay safe. Be mindful that COVID is still around. Be Please be careful with yourself. Be gentle on yourself. Take away some of those pressures. Hey, really, I mean, in all honesty, if it doesn't get done, is, is that the end of the world? Um, I know for some people it could be, but really, I'd have to say the majority, no. So... Be gentle on yourself. Love yourself first so you can love others as well. Once your cup runs over, everyone gets it. I'm Susan Jane, the Intuitive. So if you want any more, I've got to, look, I've been doing this podcast for how many 30-odd episodes. I still have my piece of paper so I remember what to say at the very end because I always forget to do that closing. <laughs> anyway, guys, I hope you have the really lovely Christmas, a lovely festive season. Um, give yourself some time, give yourself some love, enjoy it. And if you want to have any more or want to know any more about, see, I'm reading it, about tools for trusting your intuition, you can subscribe to the podcast. Um, this podcast is also now on YouTube. So you get, you get to see it on YouTube because of doing the interviews. I want you to connect nicely with the uh, ladies that, that we're interviewing. Or the people at the moment, it's ladies, but people. Um, you can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Jump onto the website, which is intuitivenature.com.au, and there's a, a few free resources and blogs on there that you can you can have a look at. I am getting a little bit better. I'm starting to get some more blogs together to start to do that. I do want to do some live streaming. Um, I have two groups. I've got Emotional Mastery, but I've also got another Facebook group, uh, and it is called Personal Development for the Intuitive Woman, I think. Anyway, something like that. Oh, isn't that terrible? I should know. Anyway, 
we'll find it i'll do that but i want you all to remember we are all naturally intuitive it is part of human nature it is our intuitive nature i'm susan jane the intuitist have the best christmas ever and i will talk to you next week okay bye for now oh i've got to press the button hang on I've got to do that bit i've got to do the ending bye <laughs>